Hey guys, how we doing? Welcome back to a, another video on my channel. Today we are down at Running Form in Burton-on-Trent where we are going to go through a uh, gait analysis. Um, the video will comprise of two parts and we'll do it as two separate uh, video targets. Um, first video we'll release, which will be the one you're watching now, will be part of uh, an overall gait analysis, uh, a little look at what goes into a gait analysis, um, and uh, we'll have a little look and a feature of why um, it's recommended all runners go out and get a gait analysis, uh, both at the start of their running career journey, as well as when they are looking at uh, getting new shoes um, and different types of shoes. So um, that will be the first video we put out, which is the one you're watching now. Um, this video will also make up part of a longer series that will conclude after my operation, which is tomorrow. Um, and what the plan with that is, is that we will look at my gait analysis as it stands today, pre-op, and then we will um, look at my gait analysis as it changes. Hopefully it will change and potentially improve um, from my operation, so post-op. Um, once the rehab, rehab and recovery uh, is starting to take place, we should um, potentially and, and hopefully see um, a slight change in, in the, the way that I'm running uh, in order to make me uh, hopefully a stronger runner longer term. So uh, we'll get things set up and we will drop in and um, see Phil who will take us through the gait analysis. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Right, so, uh, in fact, if you just come to this end of the bench, yeah. that would be more side. Just have a look Right, so feet flat on the floor, shoulder width apart. If you just stand up for me, please. And sit back down again. And stand back up again. And sit back down. And stand back up. Stay standing for me. Keep your heels flat on the floor, back nice and straight, and just gently squat from the knees for me. Good. And back up. And squat. And back up. And balance on your right foot for me. And squat on that one leg. <laughs> now you're asking. <laughs> And back up. I say, D don't do anything that hurts. J and just yeah. gently squat again. And back up. And balance on your left foot for me. And squat. And back up. And squat. No cheating. <laughs> and back up. <clears throat> okay, cool, cool. Uh, you, you've got a nice upright foot, foot position. Actually, so much so, instead of being quite so up, upright, you're actually, you're slightly leaning outwards a little bit. Yeah. Um, you've also got a little bit of a bow to the legs as well. Yeah, a little <clears throat> bit. Yeah, yeah. Fit a bush I've, through them. I've through seen, my I've, knees, you can fit. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen what um, So yeah, bit of a bit of bow to the legs. <clears throat> um, when we get you standing up, up, up off the bench, um, we expect just a slight flex in the arches. Um, we don't really get a huge amount of movement in the arches. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're, they're remaining fairly, uh, fairly stable. <clears throat> um, uh, as, you, as you're squatting, feet shoulder width apart, your knees stay in alignment with, you, with your feet and ankles, which is good. Yeah. <clears throat> um, your feet and ankles um, uh, uh, hold nice and stable. As you're squatting, um, it's obviously a very trained squat because your knees stay directly over your feet, yeah. so you're, yeah. you're doing it properly. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of people don't. <laughs> you can always tell people who go to the gym regularly <laughs> have had some guidance into, yeah, in terms of yeah. how to do a proper squat. So <clears throat> um, sometimes that can mask what's actually happening with the, with the strength and Yeah. <clears throat> You can't hide when it comes to a one-legged squat. No. Okay, which is why I told you to stop cheating. When you're <laughs> it, <laughs> That's purely balance as much <laughs> yeah. as anything. Um, but um, as you're balancing on the one leg, okay, um, we start seeing a little bit of movement in the ankle. Yeah. Okay, arches are fine. Feet are still stable. You, you, you are in what we call a supinated position, so slightly outwards. Um, uh, we're getting a little bit of wobble from the ankle. Thank you. As we get you squatting on that one leg, okay, your knee then starts drawing inwards, okay? Um, your glutes are really weak, basically. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's the same on the other leg as well. So, um, uh, and ultimately, the glutes in your core um, ultimately have a massive part of um, uh, what goes on yeah. uh, in, in, the, in the lower legs and so on. So, um, uh, so from your foot posture and so on, you, you're very much on the outer borders, um, but we've got weakness in the chain further up. So, um, yeah. So, uh, pop your socks and yeah. shoes on. Happy on Trevor? Yes. Yeah. So, don't need to go racing away. Yeah. Just want to build, your, build yourself up to a nice, comfortable running speed for yourself. Yeah. 
and we're going to fill it for about 15 to 20 seconds. So, so uh, you're in control, increase yeah. the speed there, decrease the speed yeah. there, and then that's the stuff that we can use. No problem. And the speed's displayed on there. Yeah. So we don't have to carry us away, but we want to run with purpose. Yeah, no problem. Where do you normally look when you're running? Uh, about generally 15, 20 yards in front of me. Okay, and pavement? Uh, yeah, more often than not. Try and get myself looking up at people's backs. But... Um, <clears throat> so what we're actually looking at is known as the gait cycle. Okay, the gait cycle itself is defined as being the point at which foot first makes contact with the ground uh, through to the toe leading off and making contact with the ground again. Okay. okay? Most people will land on the heel, so heel, toe, heel. You obviously land on your forefoot. Your heel doesn't touch the ground at all, which is, is fine. Yeah. <clears throat> um, there's no issues with that. Um, but there is, there's a few things about your, um, uh, your actual running posture and technique that I've picked up that, that, that can certainly be worked on. Okay. <clears throat> so um, I'll explain the heel striking first. Yeah. We expect the foot to strike slightly on the outside of the heel, gently roll into the centre, flatten off, and lead off straight. Okay. Um, that roll from the outside to the centre is called pronation. It's your body's natural form of cushion. So yeah. we do need that. Okay. Um, Sixty percent of us, roughly, roll too much. So um, uh, we strike rolling instead of holding flat. The foot then continues to rotate yeah. and collapse in. Okay. It's called over pronation. Okay. Pronation as a term uh, is banded about that left line yeah. centre and is very very um, misunderstood. People perceive pronation as a bad thing. It's not. It's excessive pronation that's the bad thing. Foot drops in, takes with it the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Misaligns muscles and joints through the lower limbs and puts lots of strain on the on the soft tissues and the joints through the lower yeah. limbs and can even uh, play havoc with the lower back as well. So um, to, to 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 combat that, we offer a shoe with support, which then corrects the foot posture. That corrects the um, lower limb line um, and, and, and offloads all the um, strain through the lower yeah. limbs. Okay. Perfect. Flip side to that is supination. We strike on the outside and we don't roll inwards enough. It's yeah. on the outer borders of the foot. So because the foot's not rolling inwards enough, we're not getting our body's natural form of cushioning, we're landing with more force, okay? And actually, it's sort of not, not really a good thing. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> tends to be people with higher, more rigid arches. Um, uh, it's not very common, it's about 1% of runners, okay? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that's heel striking. Four foot striking, exactly the same principle applies, okay? Um, it, it's, it's just a, a much more subtle. So we land slightly on the outside of the forefoot, yeah. roll in, there's a structure underneath the metheads that stiffens up, that actually stabilizes the foot. Um, it can be quite an efficient um, uh, running technique because yeah. um, uh, when we're heel striking, the point at which your foot is likely to collapse in is when the foot is fully flat on the ground. Everything's got a chance and time to kind of slump and yeah. react. When you're on your forefoot, um, uh, actually, all the structures through the arch and the midfoot actually remain quite taut, so yeah. you don't have the same opportunity to slump and collapse. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so like I said, roll in, uh, uh, the heel lowers off, um, uh, flatten slightly, and then we, we obviously push off the toes again. Um, again, we can still supinate with um, with that as well. Um, but again, it, it depends on uh, some of it's also technique with, yeah. with the forefoot as, as, to, as to how that landing comes up. So having a look at yourself. Okay. So 
effectively on the, on the gait analysis, what we're looking at is aligning the center point of the calf, yeah. center of the Achilles and the center of the heel. Okay. Now you've already started drawing your foot inwards slightly, getting ready to, to land. Yeah. But we've effectively got a nice straight line down the back of the leg. Yeah. Okay. We need to maintain that straight line all the way through from the first point, point of contact through to the, the last point of okay. straight contact. Now you can see your you actually scoop your foot in quite a lot. Yeah. Okay. We do expect it to be a subtle roll. You're landing quite far on the outside of your foot, which is um, which matches in with the wear pattern on your shoes actually. Yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, all the wear pattern is, is, is very much down yeah. the outside of the shoe. Okay, um, I would say that that's slightly on the extreme okay. sort of side. We'd normally like to see landing a little bit closer to, to, to the center line. But then watching the back of the heel in the Achilles, first of all, as that foot then rolls in, okay? So we do roll inwards, okay, um, which is fine. We're maintaining that straight line up the back of the leg, which is good. Uh, and then again, your heel doesn't, doesn't fully make contact with the ground. Yeah. And then we lift off there so that's good right foot makes contact here again it's quite an extreme position on the outside of that foot uh, the right foot again it's it's a little bit slower to roll in um, but uh, but does actually roll into a neutral position so that's fine again heel never touches the ground and then we lift back off again You're almost on the left foot, you almost lift off slightly of the outer toes as opposed yeah. to the big toe. Um, we do ideally want you to push off your big toe because the structures okay. in the foot are a lot stronger yeah. and, and, and are, are sort of made to manage that. <clears throat> so, but some, some of that again can be altered by technique and so on. Looking further up the chain, um, obviously we've got a little bit of a bow to the legs, which is fine. Your knees are actually holding in good alignment and, yeah. uh, with your feet, so we're not seeing your knees collapsing or anything like that, so that's good. So all in all, landing on the forefoot, generally pretty neutral. Le uh, the, the, the left ankle is just slightly weaker, it's just dropping in a little bit quicker yeah, than, the, okay. than, than, sorry, the left ankle is a bit weaker than the right one. Just draws in a little bit quicker, but nothing particularly untoward, untoward in terms of your overall alignment. <clears throat> um, what I would highlight is is the fact that we're we're reaching quite far forwards. Okay. And I think that's the reason why you're landing so far on the outside of the foot. You can improve your efficiency uh, and um, soften your landing by altering your technique. Okay. okay. So on the iPad here, a video of you from the side. Okay. Right, so in the nicest possible way, your swing through, so we, we've got um, uh, the contact phase, which is why your foot's in contact with the ground. Yeah. Swing through phase is basically as, you, as your foot lifts off, swing through and then make contact again, okay? Your swing, th th swing through phase is a little bit lazy, yeah. okay? In the fact that, that you're, you don't lift your knees very high, yeah. okay? You've probably got a lot of tightness in your hip flexors and so on. <clears throat> now, as your, your heel lifts up here, you swing through and then your knee stops. And then what you do is your foot then pivots. Yeah. And you reach forwards, okay? And you actively point your toes when you reach forward. And that's, that's why we're landing so far on the outside. Okay, so <clears throat> you're leading all the way to here, okay? You're actually fully outstretched before you've even made contact with the ground. And that's when your, your left foot is reaching to the outside yeah. <clears throat> and then we're coming down and landing here your leg is fully straight in that yeah. position as well you're not actually getting any shock absorption from your knee okay side. so you've got th you've got sort of three areas of your body that are shock absorbing as you make contact with the ground so you've got like your foot and ankle okay uh, obviously obviously we flex and bend there the knee should be should be flexed yeah. as we land and then also the hip slightly as well okay um, so because you're landing on the straight leg you're actually landing with a lot more force than yeah. you need to um we come down and we land in there straight leg all the way through again that right knee gets to just there and from here you could almost put a pin in through that knee there and then this foot just swings like a pendulum yeah forwards and then you overreach point your toes and then land on the outside okay now, in terms of technique-wise with that, what we, what we want to encourage is we need to encourage, or we, we would like to encourage, to drive through more with the knee. Yeah. 
and lift that knee higher. And then what that will then um, uh, force you to do by lifting the knee higher, you'll then come down flatter. Yeah. And that will mean that you're landing flat instead of on the oh, outside right. of the yeah. foot. Okay. You'll land softer, um, so it's going to protect your joints and things like that. Yeah. It's also going to be more efficient, so you're going to expel less energy as well. Okay. So that that really is um is a, is a big take home point. Um, you know, and again, obviously, in terms of what you said about your you, you journey from losing weight with the running and things like that. <clears throat> um, you know, we've all had times when we're carrying a little bit more weight, and if we're making it hard for ourselves in terms of the technique landing harder, yeah, it's just exacerbating everything. <clears throat> so the softer we can land, the more efficient we can run. We get faster, we land with less force, yeah. less strain on the body, recover quicker. So it all kind of comes yeah. as a package. <clears throat> um, and then the only other thing, really, <clears throat> again, it, it'd be interesting to see you when you're running on the road as opposed to on the treadmill. Yeah. Here, you're clearly kind of looking down Look at, at the console. Yeah. <clears throat> and with that, so if in terms of. Uh, da, 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 Right. So kind of drawing a line down through the middle yeah. part of the hip. Now, as much as possible, we want to try and run with our upper body nice and upright. Here, um, oops. obviously, and again, it, it could be could be different when you're running outside. Here, you're obviously looking down at the console. With that, you're rounding your shoulders, yeah. um, hinging forward, which then naturally puts a bit more strain on the lower back. <clears throat> as soon as you start hinging forwards from the hips, that starts pulling yeah. on the glutes, lengthening the glutes, putting them into a weaker position, um, which again, the glutes and your core are, are really kind of the powerhouse of, of your lower limb alignment yeah. to, to generate power and also to stabilize your lower limbs, again, to offload them from, uh, from injuries and things. So um, uh, getting that, that upper body more upright um, directly above your hips will actually make you more efficient as yeah. well. And that again, help to make you more resilient to injury. Right, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Is that a lot? I try to. Be fair, <laughs> I, I try to. When I've been out running, effectively, Sam and Jake and the lads I've been running with have tried to get me to imagine that there's someone pulling on my chest. Okay. With a almost a, a rod up my neck, so I, I run more like that. Yeah. Rather than like Instead, that. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. when I try, when I'm when I'm on the road and I'm just. <laughs> In my own world, I actively try and focus on okay. keeping myself upright. Let's talk to this technique side. Hop on the yeah. treadmill. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, put yourself on the spe same speed you're on. Yeah. I'm going to film again. Right, so for this change, 
what I want you to do, the phone you picture me here. You know, you know when you see, you see guys going 100 meters, and they're getting close to the line, and they dip the head yeah. to be the first thing across the line. Okay. These bones at the front of your hips, I want that to be the first thing to be to, to, to cross the line. Think about the hips, okay? Push now. Push forward with the hips. Okay. That, I want that to be the first thing to cross the line. Okay? Okay. Now with that, this is going to be one cue that sorts out your whole posture. Don't look up with it. Just look ahead. <laughs> now find myself trying to look in for the fun part. <laughs> right, okay, stop yourself there. Yeah. So by concentrating on the hips, okay, um, naturally, as soon as, even if you're running almost hunched over, yeah. as soon as you push the hips forwards, it pushes you up right. It pushes you up right. And then as soon as you, you're pushing the hips forwards, it's, it's forcing your glutes to engage and you're driving through from the glutes instead of kind of dragging your body through. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's just making the most of this. Even that, I can feel. It feels different. Yeah, yeah. but my legs and my glutes. Are... Yeah, and it, 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 it's one of those things, it, will, it won't feel normal for like, you know, it takes a while before it, before it sort of normalizes. <clears throat> So this is you running with your hoodie on, knee cover stops and you swing through and point the toes, you land with a straight leg. Yeah. Locking out that knee, locking out that knee. Again, locking out the knee every time you it's swing through, it puts the impact on your knee. Yeah. <clears throat> you see uh, how, much, how much more upright your body posture yeah. is there. Is it, on, on this one, obviously, because you're concentrating on your hips, you, you're very much going into that yeah, pointing your toes. Yeah. From, maybe even more so because you concentrate so much on the hips. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really corrected the upper body posture. Yeah. You, you tuck your bum right in, your upper body's um, uh, nice and tall. You know, everything, everything from kind of there upwards is spot on. Yeah. Um, so this is when I started getting you lifting your knees. Yeah. Which you were definitely doing. You were, you were hitting the cue, raising the knee higher. You're still, yeah, although you, you, you're almost jumping higher and then still flicking the, the, yeah. the foot out. <laughs> It'll take a bit of practice. <clears throat> um, the next one, I'll slightly further out. So again, you lift, this is when I ask you to lift your knees higher. But we, we're, st we're, we're still swinging through that foot and, and trying to reach for the ground. Yeah. <clears throat> um, again, that's a bit of habit. This, this lifting the knees, <clears throat> to some extent, um, we try and use it as a as a as a cue as a drill, um, almost to over exaggerate it. Yeah. And when you over exaggerate it, when you're doing like um, short sort of training sessions and so on, when it comes to more sort of regular mileage, naturally you, you won't run with your knees quite so high, but it will be higher yeah, and really. you'll you'll actually drive through better yeah. than you were doing before. So it's kind of getting that middle ground. You're trying yeah. to trying to retrain your yeah. body that actually lifting your knee up to there is normal and it's not so good just stopping there yeah, and swinging the foot. So we'll take it out of that. The, yeah, compostable. So ideally, drive through the knee so you can to like here out, and then we want to come in the, the leg yeah. like this. And so I'm, bent, I'm landing with my foot almost. Just, the, or bent leg, sorry. So yes, yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so the closer to this midline of the hip, okay, yeah. the same as when, when I point out the midline of the upper yeah. body. Yeah. You've got, got a central point in the middle of your hip here. <clears throat> okay, the closer to that that you land, okay, the the, the more cushion, the more stable it is. Yeah. Okay. The further away from your body you yeah. go, the less stable it is. No, they are. And therefore, like, um, we rotate the foot onto the outside. Yeah. You know, like three passes. And yeah. in terms of your arm, you don't need any extra the, support or anything. Particularly special about the shoe, quite easy. but by refining the technique, yes. you get a lot more um, out. You get more mileage on the shoe because yeah, I'm assuming. Yeah. Burnt, I mean, even the knees. The, you know, you obviously haven't done much mileage in them, but yeah, all that wear is all down the outside, yeah. <clears throat> um, and, and, and it, you know, you you you've compressed the foam. You're always landing the first yeah. point of contact is always the, 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 the most wear. Yeah. So you're always going to compress the foam more on the outside, and what will then happen ultimately over maybe the first 200 miles or whatever. 
that foam will get so compressed that actually when you land, yeah, I mean, it, because you're not it, using it. the foam on the inside at all, it's not an upset but you're compressing the foam so much yeah. on the outside, um, the shoes are then naturally the going to almost hold, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, hold you out yeah. like that and it, they'll it almost assist forcing you out. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, so if you, by, by refining the technique, shortening that stride length, instead of landing here, yeah. okay, Bring that right in. We are here you want to land sort of no more than half of a foot from the midline of the hip. Okay, so if we lift the foot, drive through with the knee, come and land here, that is a stable position. It's a stable position for the foot to land. Your foot will land flat, it will offload the muscles and joints, and it's more efficient. You'll run faster and with less energy. Yeah, so I think what I've done over time. Yeah, there's something that is different. Uh, yeah. Shuffle because I'm running around slow. Yeah, yeah. They're a nice shuffle. So a nice little size. Because I'm running slow, I've tried to extend the shuffle length or yeah. the, the stride length out yes. to make up more ground. And, and yeah. actually, what I've done there is I'm, I've. I've, I've I'm, 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 the biomechanical yeah, I'm, I'm stretching further yeah. rather than actually becoming more efficient. We just shuffle it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. right. That's interesting. Again, if you think about, one, if I was to stand on this bench, one an hour. Okay, and jump off and yeah. land in that position where you are in there, I'll probably break my ankle. Yeah. If I jump off here, land flat, and I flex at the ankle, the knee, and the hip. Can land absolutely but, no problem at all. Yeah, yeah. You, you and, and it's you know that's obviously an extreme version of but what it, we're doing. It makes now. sense because I'm. <coughs> yeah. So I, I Sunday is a prime example. At a certain point, I didn't roll my ankle completely. Yeah. But I came down on yeah, an uneven yeah. part of the surface, yeah. and for probably half a mile after that, every now and again, it felt weak as I was coming down, almost as if I would tweak something. And then, just at that point, of coming towards the end, and I increased the pace for the last mile anyway, yeah. and it dissipated a little bit. But that's because I'm landing too far on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Anna, yeah. on the flip side of that, on my left foot, I've bought three or four different shoe types that the very left side of my foot is constantly uh, difficult to explain. But I, I start to get pins and needles after a while in the bottom of my foot. Okay. Will that be anything to do with the fact that I'm landing so heavily on the outside. It could be, yeah, yeah, <coughs> yeah. Um, depends on the shoe. Um, cheers, Alice, yeah. Um, depends on the shoe. Um, because, because you do land so far on the outside, if you have a shoe that's too stiff, Maybe if you if you if you get a shoe that's maybe got um, medial arch support in there, yeah. um, so um, we've got medial which, which is the inside of the yeah. lateral on the outside. <clears throat> so if you've got a supportive mechanism on the inside, um, again that all th there is such thing as having too much support yeah. in the shoes. So if you've got medial arch support and you don't need it, it will actively push you outwards. Yeah. Um, likewise for yourself, because you already land on the outside, if you run in a shoe that's too soft, um, like the um, uh, the shoe you said. Um, the invincible that you have that you didn't get on with. Yeah. If it's too soft, it's not gonna kind of no. allow you to roll in with you, it's gonna hold you on the outside. So um Invincibles were wet with the shoe that it was worst was it? amongst any on. Yeah. I bought the Alpha Fly and the Alpha Fly was just it was too tight across the whole of my foot because yeah. it was a glove type fitting. It's probably more the fit. But the the, in, the invincible I'd run could do cover about six to eight miles in them, yeah. but the last few miles, every now and again, as I'm kicking, I was having to scrunch my toes up yeah. to um, what what it felt like was releasing the pressure in my foot. Yeah, yeah, um, and again because if, if if with that shoe being so soft, you're landing it on the outside, it's compressing and it's not then. You've not got the conformity in the shoe to then roll you yeah. properly and allow your nat natural pronation. It's holding you more on the outside, so everything's having to work hold and yeah. to stabilise, as well as the fact that you're actually landing with a lot more force. So um, yeah, so yeah, no real surprise there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Because I, I, there was a number of things I was trying to work out why it would be 
whether they're just too soft and I'm not got the strength in my feet to. Yeah. I think you, Dave mentioned that with them being so soft, because I've not got the strength, yeah. I'll have it effectively, the, the sole of the shoe takes all of your spring power and just absorbs it in the cushion because they're so soft. So yeah. actually you're having to work twice as hard to get your foot off the floor yeah. in motion. But I, th I think it's more down to the fact because it's so soft, it's, it's, it's collapsing. It's you're landing on the I'm outside already. On, yeah. It's collapsing heavily on the outside and it's, it's not allowing your foot to then pronate correctly and, and, and roll in against okay. the, um, you know, the rest of the shoe. So yeah, hence, you, you know, then supinating heavily, yeah. which you landed with a lot of force and it's, it's, yeah, it's not so pleasant. Interesting. There we go. That's why I get a gait analysis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, I mean, we don't always go into into technique necessarily. It depends yeah. on, um, on on the customer and obviously our time and things like that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I mean, for yourself, there's nothing dramatic to write home in, in, about in terms of your alignment. Um, yeah. Certainly doing the static test, we've got weakness in the glutes, yeah. which is going to play a part on this. Um, <clears throat> uh, you've got a little bit of weakness in the ankles. Again, there's some strengthening it can do for the ankles to yeah. work on the tibialis posterior, which, so the tibialis posterior runs behind the ankle down here and then draws forwards underneath the arch of the foot. Yeah. And it acts like a saddle and it saddles up the arch. And that, um, uh, that tibialis, tibialis posterior, that controls pronation, that controls the roll on the foot. Okay. So if it's weak, your foot tends to go flop. Um, and also if it's weak, it's also more likely that you're actually going to over pronate yeah. and collapse in as well. So, um, so a bit, bit of strengthening on the tibialis posterior. It was quite straightforward. Just um, some some very simple exercises on that. Okay. Um, you know, sort of regularly can can help that. Yeah. So there you have it. That is my gait analysis done. Uh, appreciate you uh, hanging around for what has been a longer than normal uh, vlog. Um, hopefully, you will have seen the the benefit to going and get a gait analysis for yourselves. Uh, as you can see, the results from my gait analysis there are that I have a relatively neutral gait. Um, interestingly, it uh, became evident during the course of the video uh, and from what Phil had said when, uh, when I talked about the fact that, that I wanted to make this a two-part video with um, uh, a review of my gait uh, post-op as well, that he didn't. Uh, or he wouldn't expect to see any change in my gait um, pre and post op. However, it would be the changes to my actual form that would potentially create a change uh, in my gait, and and I think that's that's evident uh, as you've watched the video there, where he's highlighted um, some uh, some issues with my current running form, the fact that I'm quite lazy and I pivot from the hip, uh, sorry, from the from the knee, the fact that my glutes and my core are quite weak uh, and, and lazy uh, and not fully supporting me to become uh, as efficient uh, as I can be uh, in, my, uh, in my running form and my running gait. So, um, huge shout out to, uh, to Phil uh, at running form for, uh, for for taking his time to go through the gait analysis with me there. Um, the guys there offer two services on gait analysis. You can either get a gait analysis as part of buying a pair of shoes from running form. Um, that will generally be a free of charge gait analysis as part of making sure you get the right shoe for you. Uh, alternatively, if you just want a gait analysis, uh, you can... Uh, you can book in with them. I think there's a charge of around about £30. I may be incorrect on that, but, but there's certainly a charge associated to just getting uh, a gait analysis done. Um, you know, really appreciate Phil there. He, he's done that gait analysis for me um, free of charge in order to, to build this, this document or this, this, vlog, uh, this vlog up. Um, quite happy that I've got no real issue around my gait. Uh, I'm, I'm neutral, uh, which means that I'm pretty much open to most shoes. It has made me think about the fact of um, going and getting a gait analysis done whenever I buy shoes, whether that be um, paying myself to go and get a gait analysis done based on the shoes that I want to go with. Um, as you know, uh, I'm quite a fan of, of Nike running shoes. Um, that said, 
there are a few shoes out there on the market at the moment that I that I'm interested to try. The OnCloud Monsters being being one of them. Um, so yeah, um, as I say, massive thanks to Phil for taking the time to to go through that with me. Um, hit up Running Form on www running-form.co.uk. Uh, they've got Brooks on, uh, Two Times You, Asics, um, and a number of other brands that they sell there. They've always got some good deals on. Uh, check out their website. We'll put the uh, the address again here so that you're, uh, you, you can take note of it. Alternatively, if you're local to Burton, call in and see Phil and Dave and the guys down at the shop. Um, Ask them for some advice on, on whatever it is you might be looking for, whether that be your gait, whether you're looking for new pair of shoes, whether you want some kit. Um, they're really good. They've got lots of hydration in there. They've got lots of kit in there. And they're, they're, the wealth of knowledge that they've got is second to none. So, so take your time to go and see them if you are local to Burton. Um, for now, let's go and get this up done. And we will see you post-op and hopefully start documenting uh, the recovery and the road back to the next race, which we will talk about uh, once we know what the uh, the rehab and recovery timetable is going to be. And then we'll start to look at what we're going to program in for the second half of the year in regards to racing um, and, and everything else. So, yeah, thanks for watching and I will see you on the other side of the operation. Cheers, guys.